In this module, you will learn about ecosystem services and the theories behind them, understanding, regulating and supporting services, including water, nutrient and soil organic cycles, the special characterization of ecosystem services and the identification and assessment of those ecosystem services. And we will end with discussing that priorities matter and which ecosystem service it should be selected for assessment. This module covers the first three steps of the ELD 6 plus 1 approach with a particular emphasis on step 3, the types of ecosystem services. We'll start with some definitions of ecosystems and of ecosystem services. First, what is an ecosystem? It's defined as a dynamic complex of plant, animal and microorganism communities and their non-living environment interacting as a functional unit. Ecosystem services are the direct and indirect contributions of ecosystems to human well-being. This figure shows the link between the four categories of ecosystem services and human well-being. The four categories are provisioning, regulating, cultural and supporting service. This figure provides some examples of the four categories of ecosystem services. Please note that other classification systems exist and you can find more details on them in the script. We will now link the land degradation processes to ecosystem services. And for this, we need to remember the different categories of land degradation as shown in the figure on this slide. Briefly, the effects of land degradation on ecosystem services are outlined in this slide. Depending on the extent of the phenomena, these processes lead to a decline or a loss of the different ecosystem services. For example, soil fertility decline and consequently a decline in provision and ecosystem services like crops, fruits, fiber, timber, fuel, wood and medicines. The loss of topsoil where soil erosion eventually causes damages further upstream. Reduce flood regulation functions, soil and groundwater contamination reduced water storing capacities, sinking groundwater levels, and reduced carbon sequestration and climate regulation functions. This goes along with reduced biodiversity that includes soil microorganisms, as well as flora, fauna, and above ground habitats. In contrast to the previous slide, we now list the beneficial effects of sustainable land management practices. The sustainable land management practices maintain ecological resilience and the stability of ecosystem services. For example, they will help to increase the soil organic matter content and therefore maintain or improve soil fertility. They can enrich and stabilize the topsoil and reduce soil erosion. They can keep or enhance soil health and water purification mechanisms. They will maintain or enhance water storage capacities. They can foster carbon sequestration and maintain or increase biodiversity and improve the resilience of the system. We can use figures such as this figure on the water cycle to try and understand the regulating and supporting services. The water cycle is an essential part of many ecosystems. It is sometimes difficult to assign the water cycle to strictly either supporting, regulating or provisioning services. For example, precipitation is the main source of water which falls under supporting systems, uh, supporting services. Then partitioning precipitation into evaporative recharge and runoff processes corresponds to regulating services. Fresh water is also essential to human consumption, which represents a provisioning service. More information on the water cycle is provided in the script. Figures such as the water cycle help in the understanding of the role of regulating and supporting services. 
For example, in soils, water retention is fundamental to provide water for plant growth. And desertification is essentially due to water loss from soils. In addition, vegetation and land cover are major components of the water cycle. Then we can think of ecosystems as a natural water infrastructure. Yeah. We can also use diagrams such as this one on uh, the nutrient cycles to help us understand the role of the regulating and supporting services. And again, more information on the nutrient cycles is provided in the script. Here we provide further examples of the role of regulating and supporting services in nutrient cycles. For example, soil conservation measures improve natural soil fertility and nutrient cycles. For instance, by using crop rotations with legumes, green and animal manures, cover crops in, comp in combination with reduced or no tillage, limited herbicide use and agroforestry. The nutrient use efficiency is optimized by applying context adapted soil amendments such as compost or liming agents. And the application of fertilizers should promote a balanced crop nutrient uptake and be based on soil and plant analysis. Another example is the carbon cycle. And as for nutrient cycles for nitrogen and phosphorus, soil organic carbon can be increased through sustainable land management measures. More information on the carbon cycle is provided in the script. There are some specific challenges to characterize ecosystem services. Sometimes ecosystem services are difficult to assess, to quantify and to evaluate because of the spatial and temporal dynamics their connectivity and complexity, as well as trade-offs and synergies within ecosystem services. With respect to spatial dynamics, there might be differences in where an ecosystem services is produced and where the benefits are experienced. And the figures shown are examples of this. With respect to temporal dynamics, the ecological conditions and processes can change in a dynamic way, and societal preferences and needs can also change over time. In terms of connectivity and complexity, changes in the ecosystem can affect services differently. Changes or impacts on one component may also affect other services. This makes ecosystems very complex and difficult to understand and to assess. In terms of trade-offs and synergies, the reduction of one ecosystem service might increase another ecosystem service and vice versa. In other words, the size of the bubbles in the figure shown below can change. This figure is another way of representing the trade-off and synergies between the ecosystem services. In this example, we move from a natural ecosystem into intensive cropland and into a cropland with restored ecosystem services. And again, the size of the areas under each ecosystem service can change. Trade-offs can have implications for the distribution, the equity and the interests of different stakeholders. It is possible to create synergies and thereby win-win situations where more of one ecosystem services creates multiple other ecosystem services and benefits. It is important to not only understand the function of the ecosystem dynamics, but also the social systems that interface with the respective goods and services. In this table, we outline the difference between the rivalry and excludability of goods and services. The first three steps of an ELD study aim to identify the ecosystem services. In the inception phase, the scope, focus, spatial scale and strategic purpose of the study are outlined and agreed upon with stakeholders who will be key in conceiving alternative sustainable land management scenarios. The second step is the identification of the geographical characteristics and the categorization of agroecological zones. Mapping has high potential to support the understanding of, comp of the complex ecological systems and interrelations. 
The assessment of the type of ecosystem services is based on the identification of the ecological characteristics of different land cover types. Important questions regarding the identification of ecosystem services are, where are the ecosystems provided? Where are the benefits enjoyed? Where are the administrative limits and what are the barriers and boundaries? With the help of maps, bundles of ecosystems can be identified in relationship to different land cover types. This step also involves assessing the type and state of ecosystem services, their stocks and flows for each land cover category. Mapping helps to visualize and discuss the trade-offs in terms of the use of ecosystem services for different activities, so that environmental problems and conflicts are identified and solutions can be proposed. Ecosystem services assessments identify and measure the potential for the provision of ecosystem services in a specific political context and for specific beneficiaries. The steps of an ecosystem service assessment are the following. One, the analysis of key structures and processes within ecosystems. Two, understanding ecosystem functions. Three, identification of service delivery. Four, potential supply of a service through an ecosystem. And five, the potential or social demand for a service. Some guiding questions could be, which economic, social or cultural activities are relevant for people in the area? Which ecosystem service services do these activities depend on or have an impact on? And which are the most relevant ecosystem services for the area and why? And which stakeholders carry out which activities and how are they dependent on the benefits of key ecosystem services? A popular concept when assessing and prioritizing ecosystem services is dependencies and impacts. Dependency refers to the, to the degree that an economic or social activity relies on a certain provided quantity or quality of a service, while impact means the degree to which an activity affects a, an ecosystem service negatively or positively or can cause a change in the provision of a given service. Dependency impact matrices can help in, in the decision, but note that this is a qualitative approach to rank or prioritize services. To sum up, during screening and prioritization, key ecosystem services are identified and are linked to development, economic, social, and cultural activities. They are then prioritized by looking at the impacts and dependencies between services and activities or by applying other criteria. In addition, the main stakeholders that are involved in the activities are identified. This allows focusing on a few key activities and services for the economic assessment. For further information and reading, in addition to the script, the next two slides provide links where you can obtain further information. If you have further questions or require further information, please, please visit the two web links that appear on this slide.